Okay, so I'm going to give a very brief overview of uh, biosharing. That's one of the projects that uh, Philip Rockefeller and I uh, run with uh, several collaborators. So um, I think this is kind of a, a needless to say that there is a, a, a lot of uh, standardization effort in the bioscience area, and many of you are aware and are involved uh, in those. And um, these are particularly in the attribute sequencing, uh, attribute uh, uh, omics area. There are, there, there are very uh, many of those groups, but also you heard the WGC, there is a lot of uh, working group under there, there is a H7 and many groups. So this, this, these are really bottom up kind of efforts, so it's community driven type of standards. And the idea that this group are trying to define um, uh, these three kind of standards, so I try to define format uh, or, or schema which the information need to be represented, to be communicated, exchanged. Uh, terminology being a uh, control vocabulary or richer um, semantic artifact like ontology, <coughs> and guideline, which is this minimal informational guidelines. You might be familiar with Miami, which is the first one done in McRae. They represent the minimum information that need to be. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Remove it. And this is the information that need to be um, represented and then uh, described and exchanged. Uh, but well, this is really good because it's important to standardize information so that it can be even better transformed in, in, in RDF eventually. But the problem is that it's really growing in number, the number of standards out there, and there is a growing interest as well. So it, there are approximately 50 formats, over 250 ontologies in the bio portal to count them, and over 150 checklists. And we are using the MIBI portal that we um, established a couple of years ago to collect the checklists in the equator, which actually collect checklists in the clinical area. So this is really great, but the problem is that uh, uh, there are also a lot of um, data sharing, data preservation policy that founders are developing, and so also um, um, a regulatory body. And actually, if you look at those um, policies, they recognize the importance of the standard, these community standards, but they are not very familiar with what they are and which one they should recommend and endorse. So it's very important to make, to make this um, standard very clear so that it can be adopted, that it can be endorsed and recommended by the founders. In turn, we can get funds to develop the standards. Uh, also journals, there is a lot of interest in, in standards and uh, notably it's the, uh, the publishing uh, um, open data working group led by Biomed Central. And uh, so uh, you will see that uh, um, guidance water are being enriched and standards are being recommended. But again, it needs to be very clear which are the standards that are applicable to certain domain of science and need to be recommended to, uh, to, to the researcher. There is also, of course, databases implementing those standards and creating new standards. But all these exclamation points really say that there is a lot of information which is not really clear about the standard that we need to know uh, and we need to try to uh, you know, catalog and represent. And, and for example, we don't know how to actually evaluate uh, the, the maturity of the standards, the popularity of those standards, so they can be recommended. Uh, we don't know which tools implement which standard very easily because these are dynamic, new one come, there is new versions, there are, some are duplicated. Um, and also, what is the value of those standards? How, how, can we can, how can we change them? How can we extend them? All this information, it's really very difficult to be accessed, not just by the researchers, but also for, by curator, developer. And it's also very difficult from, for founders and journal editors, maybe they are not as technical as you know, researcher and curator can be, so they found it also very difficult to understand what's really usable they need to recommend. So this is the rationale for why we establish this biosharing effort. It's really to try to create links between funders, donors, and all this bottom-up standardization group, and that's what we got funds to do. So we actually launched this, this website just this year, but we started this activity, particularly engaging with the funders, so really in 2009, when uh, with uh, Donfield we put together a space for science with a lot of funder, funding body because they were developing this, this uh, data uh, sharing policy, preservation policy, asking the ORD to adhere to certain standards and share the data and information. And again, it's like we need to educate them to understand which are the standards that are really usable. So what we have then done um, with this bio sharing, one part of bio sharing is really to create a catalog. And here I'm telling you what the catalog is for, so the goal of the catalog. So it's to, to centralize this community standard, to start list them in one place, but not to duplicate 
web page where the information from the working group is. So it just creates a single point of entry or catalog of entry. Uh, link it to other portals that exist where they have other information, like the bioportal has all the information about ontology, it's no point to duplicate the functionality of bioportal, of course, and link to all the other op open access initiatives. Uh, the idea is also to identify um, with the community and maintain this criteria for assessing the usability and the popularity of the standard, because that's the educational role. Uh, particularly, what we want to do is to make the link between the standard and the tools implementing the standard, because standards are, I mean, uh, are I mean to an end. So if they are implemented in databases, means we have data notated with the standard. This means it's usable. Or at least we can, we can you know, evaluate if the standard is usable. But sometimes standards just develop and left it there, and therefore are not as usable as it should be. So link to the, to the database is one cr important criteria. And of course, we want to link to other catalog, which list uh, also database and tool like NIF, Biosci, Maps, and etc. And importantly, we want to make relation among standard. And I have a slide to explain what I mean later. And of course, we want to distribute all the information as an RDF and, and foster interoperability. This is just to say that the activity is particularly a partnership with Biome and Central, um, particularly with the DMC research notes, because they are going to waive publication fee uh, for those people uh, which are actually developing the standard, listing the catalog, which are willing to publish about their, the use of the standards. And we have an endorsement in collaboration with the Nature Genetics, in particular with Nature Proceedings, because we are, we are encouraging community to post the specification of the standard Nature Proceedings because they get the DOI and therefore the version of the standard and, and, and the documentation is, uh, is traceable and it, it's linked, because sometimes they're really lost into in, in websites. So this is just a screenshot of the catalog. You can't see much because it's not animated, but anyway, if you go on the website, you will see we are uh, collecting a certain amount of information. This is really a very, very long list, it's just a screenshot. For each of the standards, we have an entry page with more details, and this catalog it will become uh, an active catalog, editable catalog by a registered user, which can maintain and update information. Important is to classify the standard according to the domain of science because we imagine funders of journal coming in and searching the standard relevant to a certain area of science. Therefore, it's important to make this category clear. That's what we're working with uh, um, uh, the bioports and NTRH to try to, to work on creating a, a, a domain um, ontology which is also used by the bioport so that everything becomes searchable and easy. This is what I was trying to explain when, when I'm saying we need to create a relation among the standards. Because we haven't done it, I'm using a picture from, um, um, from, uh, from, from the Biopass community, which published in Nature with Technology last year. So because they were presenting all the standards in the area, they had to actually represent in a figure how you use the different standards, the checklist, the ontology, and the form in combination, and which one covered which part of, of the system biology um, uh, the data, and that, that's what we need to create. And so this is a study picture, and it's only for a particular for pathway information, but because we have a lot of standard cover in different domain, we have to create this kind of representation among the standards in, in also in a dynamic way. And um, the last slide represents another activity in progress, which, as I said before, one of the criteria of evaluating the standard is their use in tools and databases. So we are working with uh, the um, uh, International Society of Biocreation, in particular Pascal Godet, the current president, and creating this body record, which is an info an, a minimum information checklist for describing databases. Because at the moment there are, there are catalog databases, but none of them tells which standard they implement. So for us, for the bike sharing catalog, it's important to have other catalog of tools and databases that refer to, to what standards use so that we can track their implementation. And the very last one is just an acknowledgement slide. Uh, the, the, this is the, particularly the people working on the project, but this is all the community we work with, we engage with, that are contributing to the catalog, or we engage with them because we want to link to their specific uh, catalog and their content. Thank you. Ian. Ian, Ian H. H. Ian H. Ian H. Um, 
I had the sense from speaking to him a few months ago in London, just before your bio sharing meeting, that uh, BMC uh, and some other publishers are interested in um, uh, publishing some data sets in RDF, which I think is really very good news. Well, I, I guess Nature as well. Is that is that? Uh, I can't talk on behalf of uh, but, but, uh, uh, Okay, so that's not something official yet. But, uh, okay, I'll start the rumor then. Yeah, actually, there was this meeting in Europe which I attended. There's a publishing open um, data by, led by BMC. And if you go on the BMC um, website, they have a blog detailed the minutes of the meeting. And if you find some statement that kind in there, otherwise, it's probably working progress. So I can't, I don't know, I won't be able to confirm it. Uh, 